around 20 to 40,000 years ago. So that, that is the difference. So when I say native, mm -hmm. I'm talking about mongoloids. The mongoloids, when I say mongoloids, I'm talking about like the Sioux, right. the Apache, those natives. And when I say indigenous, I'm talking about the Shakta, the uh, uh, the Washita, and the Wampapane, the Blackfoot, the yeah. Native Americans, mm -hmm. the Blackfoot, the, the Black Hawks, mm -hmm. and the so Black forth. Feet. Yeah. So natives. Let me ask you a question. So are you saying that the indigenous um, people, for one, were they they were dark skin? They were from they were Africans. And are you saying that they were here since the Pagean? I mean, like when the world was together, or exactly. Okay. The world at one time was all one landmass. Mm -hmm. You can put Africa and South America, South America together, mm -hmm. like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. All these landmasses fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Now we'll talk about Mu and Lemuria. Uh, here in a minute, those land masses sank uh, at, at a point in history, so they're no longer out there. But at one time, it was all one land mass, it was called Pangaea. Noble Drew Ali and the Moors called it a Mexum. Mm -hmm. That land mass split 26 million years ago. So those humans who lived in Pangaea was transversing between what we know as Africa, the Middle East today, and Europe today, and the Americas, because it was all one landmass. Yes, sir. Um, also, to piggyback off of what you just said, there was a show uh, back a while ago, and it was... Um, on this show was this woman who showed that all of these land masses were connected. Mm -hmm. That actually what was uh, had been done was a discredit to the evolution of the earth because as it is today, they think that's the way it has always been. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever talked about the catastrophes that happened to, in regards to the splitting of these land masses. Right. Right. And there's been many catastrophes over the years mm -hmm. that have caused all kind of new paradigms in terms of the way the earth land masses look and the way and the way the oceans look. So the indigenous uh, Americans are saying that they've been here since the beginning. Now, when the land masses split up in the in in the middle, in between, was another land mass, which was called Mu or Lemuria. And you had to take ships, a boat from Africa to get there, or a boat from the Americas to get there. But that land mass was there. And uh, Lemuria sank somewhere around 40,000 years ago, somewhere around that time frame. So when that, when, when that land mass sank, that means that those who were on the continent of Africa were just there. They got isolated there, and those who were in the Americas got isolated here. But guess what? There never was an isolation. These people were sophisticated enough to build ships that could travel from Africa to the Americas. And, and in a little while, we'll get to how they did that and what, what made that possible. Let's bring it up now to about 40,000 BC. And what we find uh, is that <coughs> Uh, from Bolivia to Mexico, the remains of the Dwa. Now, the Dwa is proper is the proper name for
for what people call pygmies. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the remains of the Dwa have been found and also uh, what Westerners call astroloids. Astroloids would be like your uh, aboriginals in Australia. They found them here. Hmm. And that's a very interesting story how these people uh, uh, left up out of Africa and went and migrated to different parts of the world. Matter of fact, the Dwa wound up in Europe. That's where the story in Ireland of the little leprechauns and whatnot come from because of the little Africans who inhabited that land. This is around um, 45,000 B.C. They got iced in around 40,000 B.C. And they went through a, 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 a natural selective process to become Caucasite. You know, but all, all of this is stuff that has been talked about uh, on Footprints, on Footprints, Our Story. So now around 40,000 B.C., we see the Dwa, and the, I'll just say Australian Aboriginal type of human being down in South America to Mexico. As a matter of fact, uh, it's believed that the astroloid or, or, uh, 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 was here before the Dwa. And uh, they believe they came here somewhere around 70,000 years ago okay so even with that is showing that Africans have been on this landmass for a very 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 long time mm -hmm. okay so that's why we call them indigenous and again the natives or the mongoloids who came through through the Bering Strait the Mexican historian Riva uh, Palacio states, it is indisputable that in very ancient times, the Negro race occupied our territory, meaning Mexico. The Mexicans recall a Negro god called Exilton, which means Blackface. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, and most people see most people don't. Th th this history, a lot of this history was buried mm -hmm. here in North America. Now, when you go to other places like Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, and different places there, they know this history, but we have not been privy to this history in what's called the Western world. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, back during the 1800s, it was a move uh, by European historians to bury any type of African history. Now, that was then, but things are changing now. And a lot of this information is coming to the fore. As a matter of fact, like that, you saying there was a lady on TV mm -hmm. uh, uh, talking about some of this. And when you look at the history channels, your learning channels, the science channels on television, uh, they're bringing out a lot of this stuff that we're talking about. So someday the history books uh, uh, will be changed. Yes, sir. Also, too, in regards to the lady that was on the talk show, there was no distinction between the coastal waters like we have the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. It was once called the Great Waters. Okay. It was mm -hmm. once called the Great Waters.